session all right cool so there are three types of variable in java right we have already covered this thing right in the variable sections in the notes part okay okay these are the data types cool and this will be the one okay all right so local instance variable local variable and static variable right and with the local variables <coughs> when memory is allocated Then when the method starts and then when the method ends. Yes, when the method starts. All right. Just to, uh, okay. Let me just pause. So we know in the Java variables, variables are used to store the data temporarily, right? For saving the data permanently, we have the databases, right? So now the thing is, and what's the memory? each data each these are the three types of variables in java local instance and static right so this was the first session that we have completed now the thing is we need to know what's exactly i mean the thing that we have already covered all the data all the all these variables are stored in the local variable are stored in the stack memory right instance variable heap and static in the non heap right but these are the logical names in the computer hardware everything is stored in the ram we already covered this thing so just going to directly go to this chart which is most important item in this entire session i mean in the variable session so local variables now we we will create it inside the method only instance variable outside the method inside the class and static outside the method inside the class but with a static keyword right now the thing is memory allocation we need to check over here when the memory starts memory memory is allocated and memory is destroyed when the method ends right with the instance data is provided very when the object is created at that particular time memory is provided and the object is destroyed at that time the memory is freed right or released the same goes with the dot class file as well in the static when the dot class file loads what is the dot class file whenever we write the code the code is in java right dot java file so if we go over here and check anything so this a if i want to go inside this folder i will find that this is a java file right a dot java and runner dot java but if i want to execute it <coughs> after that what happens a dot class file gets created right so this is the dot class files exact same okay what the path class elements variable local basics all right class elements variables local basic and this is the a right over here we have a dot java and after compiling the dot class file gets converted into i mean dot java file converted into class file right and this is the byte code we have already covered this right if we try to view this it will be gibberish right it will be gibberish for us computer understands it right <coughs> all right so let's move further we have already covered this thing if anyone having any doubts regarding this you can refer the video that is on the youtube all right now the thing is uh, that that's my okay the, the last thing that we need today is where the memory is stored right local memory is stored in the stack memory right this thing we are going to see today instance variable in the heap and starting in the non heap cool so this was the revision that we required today and now let's move to our code base right today we are going to see two things right <coughs> one thing it will be your uh this is not a java topic that we are going to cover today but it would be a rather uh basics i can create right okay okay class and object okay we we have to do class and object as well so instead of doing this i think we can create a package all right <coughs> so now what we can do i can create a class uh, a right we have been creating the class a from the very start right a b and c even with the inheritance and all whenever you find that my voice is not audible please let me know all right if if you think that there is any distortion 
and also just give me one minute before we start it. All right. So this is the class A, right? So what exactly happens when I, when during the runner, we know that the entry point of every Java object is publish static void line, right? Now what I want to do is we usually create a a equals to new a, right? This is what we do entire in the entire time, right? <coughs> so what happens? What happens when we write this, right? So we need to dissect this in the today's session and we will see also how it works and one more thing that we usually do is we create a method right and this is the thing that we used to okay, do again and again right in the previous sessions and then a dot m1 right and this thing we used to run right then a dot m1 will print we need to find out the things that happens in the backend when we process this all right so a a equals to new a what is this a what is this a class hmm? yes. this, right? this is the class thing and hmm. then what is this small a variable yes what is this <coughs> equal what is this equal to means like assigning yes assigning it's it's an assigning operator mm. right mm. what's the role of new over here mm. okay cool so the thing is new is the property dealer okay. new is responsible i mean and what would be the property property would be the RAM, right? We need space. The the thing that the reference that we can take is we need to provide this new keyword is the property dealer. I mean, we need the memory, right? This brings the memory to us from the heap, right? Or from the RAM, right? But we need to, this is a property dealer. So it will go and try to find the memory from the RAM, right? So, and we are, we al always use new keyword with the RAM, right? Oh, sorry, with the object. So, which logical entity it will find try to find the memory in the ram so answer me this thing that it's using new keyword right so which memory it will try to access logical logically there is a stack heap and non-heap right which memory it will try to access am audible hello mm, yes audible see the stack memory is used when we create an a method right okay we are not creating a method method is here so the so only there are only three options right i mean mm. we already know everything so what we can do we have a stack memory right? we have heap memory and we have non-heap memory right it's way too easy if we try to process something non-heap right <coughs> a stack works with methods right so this is not a method a stack for the main method is already been created right so this is not the method. So stack is not the answer, right? We can ignore mm -hmm. it. Then there heap. Heap works with the statics, right? This is not a static item that we are creating. So the only option we are left with is the heap only, right? So that's how also you can deduct this if you don't know. So the new keyword will work with the heap memory and each and these are the logical terms, right? Behind the scenes, when we are using a computer, we will be using the RAM, right? So the new keyword is the property dealer, which will deal with the heap memory, right? But now to a property dealer, you have to mention uh, that how much space you require, right? I mean, how much area you require. It's like a plot. <coughs> so the new keyword, if it's a property dealer, if you, if you go to the property dealer and you try to say that, okay, I want a 400 square yard of land, right? then the property dealer will go and roam the city and then he will try to find a plot of 400 square yard for you right this is how it things happen right yes so the thing is over here the new is the property dealer right so we have to but we are not anywhere we are not asking him to find i mean we are not providing any details regarding the size right we want because over here the property is not land here the property would be for the property dealer the property would be the space right and the space will get from the ram 
so the the new keyword will go to the ram and trans try to find out contiguous memory if available right because there might okay. be a chance that there are two if you say to the property dealer that you want a 400 square yard of plot right he will not come to you by saying that okay i know in two different areas 200 200 square yard plots right he will just say you that okay it's not possible right similarly will happen with the ram if you use the new keyword then it will go to the ram and try to find out the con contiguous memory if it finds in the ram then it will return the new keyword will return the memory reference we will see okay. it will go in the sequence that how things happen right <coughs> And now the thing is, we are going, we will go, uh, how it will find the 400 square yard, right? It, it requires it, right? So over here, if I write private int and a, right? <coughs> so what will happen? It will go inside, okay. All right, and int, 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 int a, right? Let's, let's take a, a or instance variable, let's take int instance variable variable and int local variable all right <coughs> cool so the thing is now how much memory do you think a requires right how java usually works it will go inside the object and try to find out how much memory it requires right because over here we don't need the property dealer is already here right new it will check right how much data it requires so it will go inside this class and try to find out how much memory the object creation requires right so what do you think we have already covered everything what do you think how much is memory it will ask from the ram we have already covered that's why i i i made sure that we revise the variables part mm -hmm. Four bytes. Okay. Why? Because integer is there. Only class only integer is there. Okay. There are two integers. Which integers are you talking about? Instance variable. Instance variable. Okay. Instance variable. Why you have taken this instance variable into consideration and not this variable, local variable? That is uh, when only that method will be called on stack it will be available. Yes, nice. <coughs> we have already covered that the local variable memory is allocated when the method is called, right? And the memory is allocated on the stack, right? And the instance variable, the memory from where we take is heap, right? And this is a stack, right? And if there was uh, there was an another static variable over here, let's say static variable then it would have been provided the memory during the dot plus yeah. file loading right so the thing is and we have already seen one more thing then that the new keyword will work in the heap memory only right if it work only on the heap memory then there is in the entire class there is only one thing that we need to put on the heap right and this integer is having four byte right yeah. So we require four byte, right? So property reader will go to the RAM and try to find the four byte, right? <coughs> so the new keyword will try to find a space of four byte, right? We are not taking into consideration because other data also require, right? This method and all those things also require a space to, to be saved. We are not taking consideration into that right now. We are just taking into consideration only the variables part. Cool. So the four byte is required. When no. the, the new keyword will be having four bytes. We'll require four bytes, right? So it will go to the RAM and the logical name will be heap and try to find the contiguous four byte space, right? So uh, if it's not able to find, then there will be an error, right? And if there isn't <coughs> memory allocated, then this will return. What do you think? What will it return? Okay, so, okay, another question. A, A equals to new A, right? What this A holds? This small, this, this. Yeah, reference to that memory. And what would it be? Answer is correct, but what would it be exactly? Means reference of the memory location. Yes, again, what? the answer is correct. Okay. But I mean, in which form? 
<coughs> it would be numeric you are right right in the ram what happens the memory is divided into spaces right so if we take this to be the entire ram let's suppose your ram has only this much bytes right in today's era our ram is in gbs but let's suppose that we are living in some old days time where the space is very less then this if this is our ram right so this okay. location i mean if from 0 to 4 bytes have been occupied right from here to here okay what i can do i can do one thing okay 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 let's suppose let okay let me copy this copy right so oh, above is the indexes right and below will be the values right so if it's occupy it will be 0 if the memory is not occupied and it will be 1 if the memory is occupied right <coughs> that's now the new keyword if you try to do this right so the new keyword will come over here right and it will try to find 4 bytes right so it will start and the 4 byte will be provided right so what will yes. it's it going to do it will provide only zero over here right it's a hypothetical situation usually it does not happen with the zero because already in the so uh, i mean the system of oh my bad the operating system takes a lot of memory right so our memory address will never start from zero right so it the a the a will be holding zero value right it is a reference to the heap right <coughs> and then what will happen our four this value will be converted occupied right so if i just duplicate this code again and in this time i just call it b cool then the new keyword will again come to the ram right it will check okay occupied 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 right so it knows that four byte is required right then it will say okay okay so one byte is free second byte is free so third byte is free four byte is free right so this b will get the four value right Yes. B will get the value of four, and then what will happen? This will be become one. Everything will become one. I mean, I'm not saying that it's a exact representation, but this is how thing works. <coughs> to just make sure that memory is occupied. So the next thing is if I create another object, right, and try to make it C, the new keyword will again come here, right, and it will find okay. So till seven it's occupied, then eight, nine, and ten, right, three only. So we will get an error. and it's not like we will get an error in this manner only let's suppose if we have a free space if we have a free space but not contiguous right we require four right so we have the four byte empty right 1 2 and 3 or 4 but it's not contiguous right <coughs> then so see we have to save an integer right we cannot divide the part of the integer here and there <coughs> integer require four bytes so we cannot create this object right so by executing like this it will be there will be an error right So this is how the internally things happen. Now, everyone clear till now? Yes. Okay. Thanks for the confirmation. So cool. So this thing will always hold the reference, not the object, right? <coughs> also now one more thing. So how it and now a dot m one, right? How will how the flow goes, right? The flow will start the, from here, right? Main method. There is a thread group called main thread group right then thread group that thread group has a main thread and the main thread is responsible to call the main method right so this is the flow i mean when i click this then internally those things happen right <coughs> okay good okay so let me just print it out okay current thread dot thread group cool so this thing we will i mean we are not this is not in our group but i'm saying it just on uh, just thread group name i'm just printing it that's it nothing else we need no i mean this is not in our groups as well even if when we do the multi threading cool and the current thread right so the thread name thread and name and this plus thread dot current oh my bad current thread dot get name okay so this is the code right so, okay my bad so if i run this <coughs> okay the thread name is main right thread name main is here and the thread group right thread group has been printed is it visible thread group name is 
main right priority is something else i mean just ignore this thing right now but just look at this thread group name is main right okay. and the thread that's running the this thing with main method uh, that thread name is also main right what we have done thread dot current thread dot get thread group thread dot current thread that get thread name right so i mean these are internal things we don't need to require it right so in ocjp we require but no one i don't think anyone is going to apply for ocjp then it's completely all right if you don't don't know right so the thing is main method is called when i call the run internally we know that this java file has been converted into the dot class file and the dot class file will gets load then the memory will provide it to the uh, static context area variables and methods <coughs> then there will be different daemon threads right again no need to know regarding this and then one of the thread will one of the thread there will be many thread groups right and one of the thread uh, thread group it will be main thread group right and that the main thread group will have a main thread and that main thread will be responsible to call this main method right this is how internally thing works when we run this thing right don't need to know i'm just telling you that's how thing goes right so the flow goes from this main th main method right so the flow comes over here right main method so in the main in the line number 10 what we what will happen this this thing this thing will be created right this main method is created right so there will be a stack that will be created right for the main method will it will it be created or not created created as it is a method yeah, it will be main method it needs to be created right right yes. <coughs> for every method there is a stack created okay let me know how many of you are not from csid background Okay, everyone is from CSIT background. All right. Awesome. Okay, cool. See, this thing, <coughs> this is a complete one. One, one subject is completely dedicated to internals, internals of computer science. I mean, the compiler and all. So this thing is usually covered in that, right? If someone is from mechanical and some other background, then they don't know regarding this, right? How the internally thing works. So the for every method. A stack memory is created, right? That's why local mem variables are stored in a stack memory, right? So a stack will be created, right? So here are the stacks, right? And main stack will be created. So the main stack will be created, right? So the main stack will be created, and the main stack will have a lot of data. See, and the stack has this stack has a lot of data, right? So I will be representing I will represent data in different blocks and just to make sure that it has been segregated properly. Cool. <coughs> so the thing is right now, what are the variables, right? In this main thread, the variables are arcs, right? Only one variable arcs is there, right? At line number nine. Am I clear? Hmm. And then line number ten, I'm going to create and this memory is stack memory right and the new keyword i'm using at line number 10 i'm using a new keyword right but i'm also creating a local this thing this a this a is a local variable right this is a local variable right yes all right cool <coughs> so i will create a local variable right a equals to a but the thing is the difference thing if let's suppose okay okay we'll we will see in the later right so this a equals to a will not hold any value right so what it will hold right over here the new keyword is there right so it will go inside the a class and try to find out how much data it requires so it requires only four byte right because static and local memory object don't care about right so four byte data it will try to find from the heap area right so there will be an heap area as well right so i'm representing heap at the right hand side cool so in the heap area let's suppose that there exist this data i mean uh, the memory is available the four byte memory is available and i will be able to get data from the heap cool so this is this will be the heap heap area and this, this will be the stack cool. <coughs> now what will happen our object will be created at the heap area right that would be the ram a stack is also ram so a uh, object of a will be created right object of a will be created and the a object will have some data right and what data it, it consists it has it has local instance variable right it has instance variable instance variable with the value 
it has the instance variable with value 0 right because instance variable get the default values right so this is the object in the ram right in the heap okay 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 my bad i just okay i need to just cross it put it here and we'll cross it and put it here cool a little space little space all right now it's fine all right now i can just go here and close the object okay it will be done here all right cool so see this is an object right and in the heap like we have just seen that okay okay i want to put it in the low line okay cool no worries so this area okay if possible okay i want to put it in the lower section and here right cool <coughs> so let's make it make it this side so this is the object that i have and the area would be let's suppose in the ram this is the memory address of the ram right so my object is at this memory address right so this a how we usually represent that this a is pointing to this is pointing to this memory area right this is how we represent we represent an arrow but if but that's not happen in the real life right so this a will hold the value of this right this will be the memory address <coughs> and again then how then you must ask one thing right that okay you have explained in the earlier section that there will be an data right? 0 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 right 6 so in the earlier section we have just made sure that from here to here right this is the memory that we have right so what we can do we can just copy paste again this thing over here and this double one will be the indexes and every data is empty So three, four, and one more value, right? <coughs> so what will happen? I mean, how? I mean, if I have the zero index, right? If I have the zero index and I put give this a reference zero, how will it know? It know that it needs to read from zero to four only, three only. How will it know? Let's suppose I have created this. So there is there is nowhere written, right? That I have to just take four bytes. If to if I mean over here there is a reference, right, to this memory. And this memory represents an object in the heap, right? But is there something mm -hmm. by which I can make sure that I need to read only four bytes, not the not the memory of I mean further than the four bytes? It will use the same concept, right? Because class A reference is there, right? A. So it will have the same logic. Okay, that I have to use only four bytes, right? So if you provide the starting index, so a starting index or the memory reference area starting memory reference that it will only try to convert the data of the size of the exact size of the object right <coughs> understood why we don't require to send the size of an object as well mm. anyone having any doubts please let me know all right cool see in the data structures in the array itself array also works in the same manner right if we create an array Right, mm. Kishore? Kishore, are you here? Yeah, Vishesh. Okay. In the arrays also, similar thing happens, right? We don't need to provide the size of the data type, right? Because in the yeah. arrays, we explicitly say int array, right? This thing, int array equals to new int, int. So we don't need to, we don't need to pass the size, right? That, okay, you need to read from the here to here, right? So, because we have int and compiler knows that int takes only 4 bytes, so it will read only 4 bytes and leave the rest. So, similar concept apply over here as well. Cool. <coughs> so, till here, anyone having any doubts? Everyone is clear, right? Everything is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, see, now the, the diagram that we have created below is still line number 10, right? control flow is still in the 10 line number 10 now line number 11 if i want to execute what will happen 
that I will go inside this M1 method, right? So I need to create a stack of M1 method as well, right? A stack needs to be created because every method has a stack, right? So M1 method also needs a stack of its own. Okay, let's remove some spaces. So now this stack will be of M1 method. Now the, the stack is of M1 method. Cool. And what will be happening inside M1 method? At line number eight, nothing will be there, right? And in line number nine, a local variable will be there, right? <coughs> so, okay, so let me just copy it. Okay, my bad. So, space. And then over here also. And over here also, right? This stack representation we require in one of the question regarding the exception handling same stack is required right because people who don't know this thing they try to wrote learn things <coughs> all right so now it will have a local variable over here if i execute line number nine the local variable will be there right a local variable right and this local variable this would be a int right this uh, int local variable will be there and the value will also be initialized directly right zero because this variable is in stack right so now you can see that this value is in, in, inside stack only, right? Local variable value is inside stack only. But the object value is in the stack, but the thing is it's in reference, right? Reference to the heap. Making sense? Got the difference? <coughs> yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So now if I print this out a a hyphen m1 then this value will be printed right over here all right and now the control needs to go back all right and where needs to it needs to go back at line number 11 right so <coughs> it needs to store right that where i need to go back right so it will store that okay runner class main method from the runner class main stack i am going to m1 method right so this method will it will it will call this this thing right it will it will be responsible to call this method right <coughs> and while i'm executing this method i need to know i need to know one thing that where i need to go back right so when i'm here i'm at the stack m1 right i need to know where i need to go back again so i need to go back at previous attack right so i need to go back from here Oh my bad, not here. I need to go back there at the M1 method, right? So I need to go back in the M1 stack, right? Or main stack. So I need to save data that okay, there is will be a main stack, and then I do need to go back to line number 10, right? Oh no. Okay, wait. Main, main, main. Who's calling this method? Main. So line number is 11. I need to go back. So what will happen? That it, it this data needs to be stored, right? That I need to, when I complete this stack, then I need to go back to main stack line number 11, right? So over here, the control will flow back to main method, right? At line number 11, control will fall back here, right? And as soon as this line ex ends, the M1 stack will be deleted, right? Entire value, entire stack will be deleted. And if entire stack will be deleted, that's the reason local variable data is destroyed right got it any doubts mm. all right can you just go ahead yeah can i just tell you once more this okay. part actually see uh the the flow will start from the main method right okay we have just seen the main thread group main thread will be responsible to call the main method mm. and that's it now from there on <coughs> before line execution of line number 10 the main stack will be created and yes. the arcs array will be there right we are we are not using terminal so this would be empty so now an object will be created right so the new keyword so first of all this reference of a will be created in the local area right so this a is a local variable but the object will be created in the heap because new works in the heap only right yes. so a object will be created on the heap and this reference variable what will it will hold it will hold the reference value right pointer to yes. the heap 
So this thing happened, right? And that night, line number 11, it will go to the it, M1 method, right? And every method has a stack. So it's M1 method stack will be created, right? Now we'll go inside the M1 method. So M1 method first line is to create a local variable. Right? So we will create a local variable. Now the, you'll see the value is over here, right? Values inside the stack only. So this is the difference. This value is not inside the stack, right? It's, oh, yes. the stack. it's in the heap area. <coughs> the reference variable is inside the stack, but the object is in the, the, value is in the heap actually. Yes. The object is. Yeah. So then the line number 10 will execute, right? So it will, in the console, it will print the hey, I have an M1, right? And as soon as the line number 11 gets executed, the entire stack will be deleted, right? That's why it's called stack memory. Stack is last in first out, right? Right? Yeah. So this stack was created first and this stack was created later, right? But this stack will be destroyed first. So that's okay. why, that's why the memory is called a stack, right? Everything has a reason everywhere. <coughs> cool. So now as soon as this M1 method ends, the entire stack will be deleted, right? And cause the entire stack will be deleted. The local variable is inside the stack. That's why we say that, okay, that local variable gets destroyed when the memory ends, right? When the method ends, right? Cause the entire stack has been destroyed. Then we need to, but make sure when I'm ending the M1 method, I need to make sure, right? Where I need to move first then, Again, right? Where will the control flow, right? <coughs> then that data will al al also be in the stack only, right? As soon as I delete the stack, I will make sure that, okay, I need to go back to the main method, line number 11, right? So the control will come at line over here, line number 11, right? And eventually it will end, right? And the main stack will also get deleted. Cool. Understood? Okay. Anyone having any doubts? Okay, no. Okay, no worries. Great. So uh, now we will see, right? This is stack and all those things, right? I have, I have said, right? No, nobody needs to believe anything, right? <coughs> we will see now how the thing works. We will see the stack as well. Cool. See main over here. Is it visible? This is the main stack. Cool. This is the main stack over here. This main is here visible. Yes. Now the arcs, right? Arcs variable, right? this thing visible yes now the thing is i will create as soon as line number 10 executes that i will execute now you will see this a equals to this thing right so over here it will be printed as a at the rate hash code right mm. <coughs> why it is printed in this manner because i mean we have i've already told everyone else right now so the thing is object class as the two string method right two string method it takes the class name class name is a so it's a then it has at the rate so that's why a at the rate and then 700 is the hash code of the object and then we have converted it to the hex hexadecimal cool so that's how the 700 all right coming back to it the code all right then our flow needs to be <coughs> now there is only one stack right no other stack is there right this main there is only one stack right so as soon as i call the method m1 there, there needs to be another stack m1 right so let's <coughs> go over here, right? Now you can see there is an M1 stack, right? Main stack also, M1 stack also, cool. Mm. And now M1 stack has nothing, right? This is just representation of this. We have already covered this object, right? This keyword represent or points back to the object itself. Now, as soon as I execute line number nine, what will happen? The local variable equals to zero, right? Similar, local variable equals to zero, right? Exact same. Visible, right? yes all right cool so now as soon as i click this in the console as soon as i end with this in the console part i will see a hyphen m1 cool this thing a hyphen m1 and now at line number this but <coughs> now as soon as i end the line number 11 see over here the m1 method will get destroyed destroyed right now only one main main stack is there right yes and as soon as I end, so that this M1 stack has been destroyed. Now, as soon as I end this 12 line, the main method will also get destroyed. Right? <coughs> and the JVM is closed because our code is written in such a way that our execution has been completed. So the JVM is closed as well. So it is connected from here. Right? This is the statement that has been made. Cool. Everyone, anyone having any doubts regarding this?
no all right cool so that's the only thing that we had to do today <coughs> one thing that we can do why we can cover the class versus object right so anyone wants to uh, differentiate between class and object now that we have covered everything entire oops entire class element what's the difference between class and object see you will you will what you are going to see in the in the definition that you are going to check online that they will say <coughs> okay class elements oops okay okay class and object all right no worries so let me create a package memory memory manage right and let me put these two examples into memory management part and then what we can say class vs object type so i will not create anything over here i will just create the notes and then over here see you if you try to search then you will find the definitions like class is a blueprint blueprint right <coughs> you will see this type of definition right <coughs> why class is a blueprint, blueprint right even okay let me just all right so this thing in class versus object we will see that class is a logical entity it contains logic right whereas object is a physical entity which represent memory right it is self explanatory why, why what's the difference right so class is a logical entity why we are saying this right the example is the student right this is a student cl class so what can i do i can write okay public int it will have a roll number right and it will have private and then a string and the name right the student will have a name <coughs> cool this is just logical right nothing exists right it's like a blueprint of a home and that exists okay let me check whether the recording is on or not okay recording is on cool so it's like a blueprint right when we when we go and want to build a home right so we we try to make a map right of it uh, in the north india we call it naksha so we need we we hire architects right and the architect will create a blueprint that that this is how our your house will get constructed right yes so what happens eventually then you will give a tender to someone and someone will bring the material right and then build a house right and but to build a house before what you need you need the land right so the yeah. land the land yeah. area has been taken care by the new hero right that what we have yeah. seen earlier <coughs> so let's let's take a sector that has been created new so the government will lease out a plots like different plots the government will lease out right so now a single architect can come and create a blueprint of the house and it will provide the same blueprint to the 10 house straight right then if the materials will be provided to the house then the builders can create 10 house similar to adjacent to each other exactly similar right it is possible right yes possible yeah so similar thing like the blueprint right the blueprint has no significance right because it's in the paper only so similarly a class has no significance right mm. but the thing is as soon as i say that okay as soon as i bring this student student equals to new student so what's happened new 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 keyword will bring the land right so i got the plot <coughs> and the student values will get initialized by default zero right so this is the plot and the values that we will provide will be the material to build the house right so instead of roll number and name what i can do i can just create the constructor for them and the student what i can say the para okay roll number roll number can be one and the student name will be parameter cool so what will happen this is the one house that i have created right and similarly with the same design with the same design of a home i can create another home as well right i can say that okay dikshita is my another home right so i can change it dikshita and then parameter cool <coughs> so a student is just like a blueprint right a class is like a blueprint right but when you provided the materials like the material will be memory right if you should provide the plot and the materials materials will be this data and the memory plot will be 
the memory right and the data will be the i mean the the bricks and all those things that requires to build the house right so this is the material that you require to build the house and this is the map that you are going to use to build the house this is the blueprint and this will provide you the land right yes. got it so that's why this terminology is is way too often if you try the class is a logical entity right because it exists inside the paper only <coughs> like the like the blueprint exists inside the paper exactly the <coughs> dot class file ex exists as just like a paper right just like a text but when we try create an object then it becomes a physical entity why it's physical because in the ram in your in your physical ram it gets created right so that's why it's a physical entity cool so a next example is similar that we we were taking example is right the class is a blueprint as it decides the object creation right without class we cannot create an object so based on a single class blueprint is it possible to create multiple objects but every object occupies memory right because if a single blueprint of a house is there then i can create 10 houses right even 20 even n number of houses in the entire country or the world but the thing is it it will require the mem uh, the memory right and it will require the land land will be equivalent to the memory in the ram in the CS and the <coughs> material to build it will be the data that we need to provide or initialize. All right. So again, again the same thing. So civil engineer based blueprint of house. It is possible to create multiple houses in the different places. Right. Every house will require some area. All right. And these are the ways by which we can <coughs> create an object. Okay. The factory method is these are the one of the design patterns and the new instance clone clone we are going to cover new operator we are using already new key keyword clone we are going to see but inside clone also we use the new key, you know, new keyword but there is a clone method that we that we can directly use but we don't we are not directly using the new keyword but internally the java is using the <coughs> new keyword right so the factory methods again we call a method and get an object we are not calling anything without i mean we are not manually writing the new keyword but internally our factory methods will create a new keyword right and deserialization is a different stuff right but again the deserialization also internally will create and use a new keyword right because memory we require right and we have only one property dealer this one it has the monopoly <coughs> so there are different ways but in each of the ways to create an object and there is a class dot for name as well that's not uh, written over here but eventually eventually what will happen the new keyword will be used like for example like we get the class not for name right so in the class not for name if we okay 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 let's go inside this <coughs> if we get in, in, inside this uh, reflection is a topic in java that also we are not going to cover in our course so okay all right so it it's not providing anything okay so we have okay so we only have the data right how it works so entire data they, they are not presenting over here so i cannot show you how it's internally working but the thing is it will call somewhere down the road the new keyword all right <coughs> so now anyone having any confusion between what's a class and an object or the memory management thing that we have seen it's not the memory management exactly but it's the flow how it works right whatever we were talking till now that this thing and this and that thing so we have seen it practically right so anyone having any doubts please speak